Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm unboxing Dinosaur Island. Din that already messed up. I could start again. Not going to. Today I'm unboxing Dinosaur World, Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. I could have just finished the Dinosaur Island that way. It would have been smarter. Dinosaur World, Dinosaur Island Roar and Write, Dinosaur World Water Pack, Dinosaur World Hybrid Pack, and Dinosaur World Ice Age Pack. And I don't know why I felt the need to announce all those titles. Probably because I messed up in the first one and felt if I could pronounce three of them correctly that I'm three for five, which is not that bad. But either way, this is going to be an unboxing and rambling. If you're new to the channel, if you're new to this particular series, it's where I walk in with a game that I need to unbox, and then I proceed to go on whatever tangent my mind takes me on, usually with one frame of reference of what I want to talk about, often the game, but not always. And we're going to start this off. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and put this over here. Now this box, by the way... I am a little nervous for this box. You see, I don't know if you can see it over there, but you can see that lift over there. This does not look like a good start as far as box condition goes. We'll see how it actually turns out. It might be totally fine. It might be. But it just, it looks pushed up. It looks like there's too much content in here. So too many heavy things are on top of this. I don't know if this is a common problem for it. I don't know. We'll find out. Either way, whether it is or it isn't, it doesn't really matter because... I like boxes, I mean, I like games, I like boxes, I want everything to be pristine and all that, but at the end of the day, I can deal with boxes that are a little bit damaged or dented or whatever, I'm not going to message the company, I'm not going to complain, now, if there were a giant gouge on the side, that could be a different story, but there's not a giant gouge on the side, or if there is, I haven't noticed it yet. Now, if you hear children running around in the background, it's because I'm filming this not at midnight, contrary to my usual filming. You see, this is what I'm talking about. We have we have these boards over here that we're pushing up, and then combine that with a little bit too much weight, and this is just completely bowed up. Disappointing, but not problematic. So, we have Dinosaur World, and this is going to be the sequel, to those who don't know, for Dinosaur Island. We had Dinosaur Island, then we had, that was by, um... With Jonathan Gilmore and Brian Lewis, I believe, and then we brought Dinosaur World in, where we have Brian Lewis, David McGregor, and Marissa Masura, who designed this one. I don't know the full level of similarities from the two games. I covered the Kickstarter, I knew more back then, but when I haven't played a game, this is a regular occurrence in the channel, where I'll talk about a game, and then six months later I'm doing a late pledge update, or I'm doing some sort of coverage, or in some way, shape, or form talking about it. But because I never played the game, what I learned or figured out at the time doesn't really stick. It's it's one thing to like play a game three times and then talk about it six months later, which I can do all the time. It's another thing to look at a Kickstarter page, figure out the details, what you know, don't know, all of that, and then look at it, you know, six months later, and you never actually played it and locked in that mental information. So, let's go over here with a skip setup. I generally like to look to see what a rule book is from when you have the start, which is going to be page eight, all the way to the end. This looks very graphic heavy, so it's not going to be that much work to go through. But this is my usual rule book check. I just like to see how many how many pages of rules have I signed up for. Like for context, actually this will be the first tangent. Okay, we got solo mode, end game scoring. So pages 8 to 17, that's not bad. That's a solid 10 pages, not a lot. Then we have a solo mode, which I don't imagine this is one I'm playing solo, at least not until people say, oh my gosh, it's such an amazing solo experience. So it's actually... It's actually funny, I was recently watching a video from from Rolling Soto, Rolling Solo, not Rolling Soto, Rolling Solo, uh, Adam, I believe his name is Adam, Adam Smith, I think his name, I'm pretty sure it's Adam Smith from Rolling Solo, um, and then, is it Adam Smith? Why did I feel it's off? It sounds right but wrong at the same time. Adam something, well it's, watch a play, it is Rodney Smith, that's the uncle, so I believe, Rodney Smith is the uncle of Adam Smith, so it's Adam Smith, yeah. Rolling Solo had a video about... The nature of solo games and how they're taking over more and more. I have more thoughts about that. I'll be talking about it probably in a separate video or probably more likely in one of my weekend reviews when I do the topic of the week. Here we have a little, you know, ad for Pandasaurus games. We have Umbra, we have Umbra Via, we have Brew, we have Loop, Wild Space. Pandasaurus has been coming out with a lot of games this year. So much so that I've had a hard time really keeping track and deciding what I should or shouldn't be interested in. It's not, it's not a ton, mind you, but they, they reprinted Magic Coral Legacy, and they came out with these four in addition to Panda, in addition to Dinosaur World, Umbra Via, Brew, Loop, and Wild Space. And they have another one coming as well that I am more interested, kind of like a time travel type situation. I'm missing a tile. No, I'm not. This is just part of the board. Okay, cool. So these are going to be the boards over here. Why was I talking about solo mode? Why was I talking about rule books? Don't remember any of this. 
either way, let's go ahead and move on forward. So this is, this is going, this, this is, these are, these are, you see one thing I'm working on, and there's going to be like two people in the comments who are like, thank God, finally, one thing I'm working on is not saying this is going to be, I have a habit of saying, well, this is going to be the boards, which are what I really mean are, is these are the boards, or this is going to be a game. When what I really mean is this is a game. It's something that I never noticed. I did. I speak in the future tense. And I think, I think I got in the habit of that because of, well, Kickstarter. I think I'm always talking in the future tense, and I think that carried over to become my filler words as I talk because it was relevant. But then I've had enough people point it out in the comments that eventually I realized what they were talking about. And I realized like a few days ago, it took me a while to catch on what they were talking about. And now I can't unhear it. So now mid videos, I'll be in the middle of saying, oh, this is going to be, and then I'll be like, no, I said it again. And I'll, I'll, I'll be stumbled off my pacing entirely. It's, it's really frustrating to finally hear what was irritating like two or three people because now it irritates me. So bear with me over the next few weeks while I try to scrub that from my vocabulary as I talk through videos on the channel. So these are. Look at, look at me, instead of saying this is going to be, these are the punch board tiles. Let's go ahead and put those in the top cam. You can't really see that much there. I can take these out of the way and then I'll focus perfectly. It's, I just like showing the thickness of the tiles. Uh, in terms of my standard three grades are feels thin, feels normal, and wow, these are hefty. This feels normal. Does not feel hefty, does not feel thin. I'll have to go through the process of putting all those in, which I'll do later. I'm not going to do that now. We have the DNA refinement zones. We have the, the Jeeple garage, the Jeeple garage. I love it. Okay, we have these tiles. Let's put that back there. We have more of these. These look like the starting tiles for each player's area. And Dinosaur, Dinosaur Island is a game that I played. We have all these zones, the Brontosaurus, the, the Paleo, Paleo, Pachycephalosaurus. Sure. Had, Hadrosaurus. Triceratops. I know what a Triceratops is. I'm good there. Stegosaurus. And then the Ankylosaurus and the Parasaurolophus. Yeah, Snuffleupagus, the Snuffleupagus because the exhibit is going to be over here. It's going to be over here. Is over here. You see, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. We have the various, we have the roller coasters. We have rides in addition to the various dinosaurs, which is great because that's, that's what you want. You have the restaurants and the art in general in this game is significantly better than the original Dinosaur Island, at least in my opinion. And Dinosaur Island was, and I could say was here, past tense is fine, was a game that I liked the game. I didn't love the game. I would say the gameplay to me was a solid... I only played Dinosaur Island once, so take this rating with a grain of salt. But I would say the gameplay was probably just shy of a 4 for me. I really enjoyed aspects of it. Didn't love like the, 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 the visitors constantly being eaten or whatnot. There were aspects of the gameplay I did not enjoy. There were aspects of the game that did provide a fun little puzzle of where to place your workers, which dice to gather, uh, how to build out your, your zoo, your dinosaurs, all of that. And I, I saw the promise of it. And it's a game that I would have dived further into because it was like, again, it's one play, first play, and it's a three bordering on a four. Generally, that's enough of a reason to dive back in for more and see where the game ends up. But I played it at the time the Dinosaur World was on Kickstarter. I played it as a trial, so to speak, to see if I wanted to back Dinosaur World. And by the way, these tiles, you can absolutely toss these in the garbage. Uh, don't take my word for it, meaning if I'm wrong, don't blame me. But I've seen it said online that you can toss those in the garbage. For myself, until someone confirms it or until I've read the rulebook, I generally don't toss anything to the garbage because of the terrifying fear that those really represent the recycling expansion where you put down recycling centers for extra bonus points. I would think that. In fact, Tom Vassell once said, and I agree with him, he said that whenever you have those little punch board tokens, it should say, throw me out on each one of those. It's so annoying. It's just the fear, the uncertainty. The amount of times I've traded for used games and found older tiles that were, well, garbage, still just stuck in there because people were afraid to throw them out. And I share that fear. So I'm not judging. I'm emphasizing, emp empathizing, empathizing. Yeah, emphasizing is different than empathizing. Empathy. Empathy, I can say, but when I try to do empathizing, it always sounds wrong. Maybe it is wrong. Maybe that's what's going on here. So, we have these over here. These are going to be your, these are, unbelievable. These are your DNA boards. These are your DNA boards where you're going to be tracking your DNA and caching those in to build various dinosaurs while tracking the security of your pen, while tracking, I don't remember what this is, and I don't remember what that is. And when I say don't remember, understand that I'm also comparing it to Dinosaur Island, so it's not always an issue of not remembering. Sometimes it's an issue of, well, just being wrong. Now we have this over here and this over here. I don't know what the, what's the difference, aside from the fact that this is bent. This one's bent poorly, so I am glad they sent me a subsequent, did they know it was bent? Is that what happened? Did they, 
I mean, this is badly bent. It looks like it was pushed up against something. I don't know if you can see that over there. I'll show you on the top camera. You can see that bend on the top camera. Look at that. Look at that, like, angled over there. Yeah. Either way, it does look like I have a replacement. So I'm not concerned about the bend. And I'm trying to figure out, if I read all the updates, I'm sure this would be there. I'm trying to figure out if there's a difference here between these two boards or whether they literally just know that this was bent and they sent out a replacement board to compensate. It might be that because I'm not seeing any difference. So I'm happy we have the replacement board. This came separately, not in those boxes, which is why it's off to the side. Again, we spoke about the fear and the terror of throwing things out. So we're just going to leave all that there and keep the broken board until I find the update that tells me what to do with it. And we have the bag. This is actually a fairly nice bag. Now, this is actually true from Dinosaur Island as well. Their bags were nice, hefty. I actually have a Dinosaur Island spare bag sitting around where I'm storing something in them. I think I'm storing camera equipment, if I'm not mistaken. Now, fun fact, I don't know when this video is going up, by the way. I have no clue when it's going up because one of the things going on right now is... Ooh, metal coins. We'll talk about those shortly. We have the dice. The dice look very similar. We'll look at those in a second. We have the amber. We have the dinosaur meeples, dinosaur meeples, dinosaur meeples. A tile that was punched out or in some way came over there. Some cards, some dice. We'll leave those over there. We have the various people here. We'll take that. We'll take some cards out. And then we have these. We'll take that out. So let's take a look at all of these things, starting with the dice before we toss them straight back in. The dice look like the same basic dice you had in Dinosaur Island, where you roll the dice, you assign them to a pool, and the players draft dice to utilize them to grab their DNA and or to assign them to various zones. Looks, you know, like the standard dice they have. They're meant to look like amber. I believe, if I recall correctly, the original one had different color dice. I think I vaguely recall the original Dinosaur Island having different color dice available. I'm not confident of that. I think it was a thing. Let's go ahead and put that back in the box. And it looks, it looks like all the tiles go there. So we'll do that. Okay, we have that. We have, we'll save the coins for last because I like coins. You know, let's do the coins first. I'm just going to change my mind. And like I said already, I don't know when this video goes up because I have a completely packed schedule for the next, well, the next two weeks, I want to say. So let's go ahead and show you some coins because these are nice. So we have some coins here. They're just, they're really nice, actually. They have, I like the fact that they have both a variety of shapes as well as design. So you're really not going to have a hard time telling these apart from any other coins in your, well, any of these, you know, that's a nice little dinosaur coin over there. My kids are going to want to see these. We have the square ones or diamonds, depending on how you look at it. That's going to be that. That is that. That is that, Alex. Get yourself together. We have these triceratops over here, triceratop coins. And they're all nice and metal and satisfyingly clinking around. This is one of those times where you can't just proxy some random set of coins. I mean, you could. They just won't necessarily have the same degree of satisfaction because they won't have dinosaur faces all over the coins. So, back to what I was saying is I, my schedule in general on the channel is that I have Monday is to back or not to back. Sunday is whatever fits into Sunday. Tuesday is going to be, Tuesday is the day that I put out three different videos generally. I put out uh, reviews and unboxings. That's where a lot of things go there. And then Saturday is usually week in review plus two reviews and or unboxings and or gameplays. Gameplays are also. Uh, and then generally things fit in throughout the week. We have showed you back it. We have top 10 lists. We have topical stuff. I don't know if I should show you these in like, let's show you these in a general handful first. And then we'll show you some after. And so right now, unboxings, unless I throw them in on a random day, which I have done and I'm likely going to end up doing with this just because I don't see what else I'm going to do, uh, unboxings generally go on Saturday or Tuesday. And they're one of the five videos that are going to be reviews and or unboxings and or playthroughs that go up Saturdays and Tuesdays. So I already have those spots heavily contested because there are a lot of Kickstarter games. I have a few unboxings. I have a whole bunch of stuff that just is trying to fit into those time slots. So it's as usual, it's an issue of trying to find spot for these videos. One of the nice things is I never have a problem getting videos out. I mean, time-wise I do, but in terms of scheduling, scheduling-wise, there's no lack of content to talk about. There's so many different board games that I want to cover. There are so many games on the shelves right next to me that I'm ready to review. I just, I can only do five reviews a week, uh, well, maximum five, and usually an unboxing or playthrough will take up one of those spots. And I don't want to push myself too hard to try to, like, at one point briefly on the channel, I switched to doing, you know, two videos a day. I did that for a bit. It didn't work as well for my schedule. I didn't like the tempo or pacing of it, so I switched back after, like, a week or two. I don't know if this is a first-player marker or what this is, but it's a nice little amber piece over here. 
That's a nice little uh, DNA. We have Jeep markers as well in here. So let's show you some Jeeps. I don't know what that other thing is. We have a dinosaur in there. I don't know why we have a dinosaur. It looks a little different than the other dinosaurs. Oh, it's a Pandasaurus logo dinosaur, I think. That looks very Pandasaurus-y, right? That dinosaur there, that looks like a Pandasaurus dinosaur. And then we have the Jeeps. All that go in these bags. And then we have two more bags full of dinosaurs that we'll show you before we start moving on to the expansions. Well, the cards first. Let's do cards first. And so, yeah. So I don't know exactly when this video is going up. Uh, hopefully I can find a spot before it's no longer relevant. One of the sad parts about pushing off videos, and this is a content creator's typical challenge, it's always a balance, which is you you do want to be first to coverage as much as possible. It's just the way life works. The first person to put out an unboxing of Dinosaur World will get more views than the second person, will get more views than the third person. Not necessarily you will get more. More is the wrong terminology. But you'll take a small hit on what you would have gotten. If you would have gotten you know, whatever, let's say a thousand views on an unboxing video, and you put yours out fourth in line, you might now only get 900 because hundreds of those people are satisfied what they, by what they saw. The rest aren't. So there is always a desire to be first, but the, the compromise, the problem is you never want to compromise on the quality of the content. You don't want to put out a review just to be first if you haven't played it enough times. You don't want to always be first if it comes at the cost of, of the content. And one of the things I often struggle with, uh, and it's a, something that, again, these are very much first, first world problems. One of the things I struggle with is I'll see people getting out a video before me and I'll be like, oh no, they got that video done already and I didn't do mine, oh no. And then two or three people do it. And then I have to remember and check myself that there are videos I get out first and we're not going, I'm not able to get all the videos at first, that's inherent. So it always is a balance of, I'll get some out first, someone else will get some out first. It's always a balance, but I, I often only focus on the ones they got first, and I don't focus on the ones I got first. It's that negative frame of mind where we look at the things we want, we don't focus on what we already have. And so I do get a lot of Kickstarter prototypes, which is nice, because Kickstarter prototypes, inherently, you're already limited in the audience of people who can be ahead of you. It's going to be, instead of anyone, like Dinosaur Earl, this is a copy I backed. I can get this at any point. Versus if I get, you know, what's a game that I got a pre-copy of? Wild Ascent, for example. Wild Descent or Chronicles of Junagar, if I get the pre-copies of those before other people have gotten theirs, then yeah, I'm only competing with two or three people in terms of getting first. And the nice thing about unboxings is you don't need to play the game. Compromising on the quality of the content is not as much of an issue. Reviews, I, I mean, I'd love to be, have their first review, but if I have to play it two or three more times, I have to play it two or three more times. It is what it is. Versus unboxing, I don't have to do anything. So, we have these cards here. I don't know what these cards are or what they do. Their objectives. Oh, the objectives. Okay, fine. They're various objectives that you have. Oh, I, I should. I, I'm saying that like I know what they are, but I actually don't. The original Dinosaur Island had uh, three game objectives. You could have e easy, medium, hard, whatever it was. You could have them in play and then give you extra points. These might be similar. I don't know exactly. We have the HR manager, the lawyer, Dino Wrangler, mechanic, senior scientist, architect. These are going to be various characters. Don't know exactly what they do. What else do we have? Okay, give me a second here. Give me a second now. I need to get my story straight. I'm taking the sleeves off the cards. I don't have a rhyme for this. Sometimes I can, sometimes when I do the random singing stuff, I can have rhymes. I did not have one planned. We have more of these. These are, these are the point scoring cards. It looks like first, second, and third, and various objectives. So these look like they're something to do with the various workers. These are going to be worker databases, I believe. If it's like Dinosaur Island, these are going to be the workers. These are the workers that you start the game with. And so those will go back in here. Then we have a few cards here. And I think it all fits into the base box, if I'm not mistaken. If I recall correctly, it should all fit into the base box. So we have public actions, gather DNA, actions, end game scoring, just a bunch of cards over here that will go over there. And that's going to be our base box. I'm not going to... Uh, do much. Do I want to put it back now? Do I want to figure it out later? I'll figure it out later. So let's put this back now. Let's throw this down here. Let's put these down over here. We could drop this. This is from, I don't know if this is from Dinosaur Island. I don't know which thing that's from. I mean, there's two games here. There's Dinosaur Island and there's Dinosaur Island Roller Rights. So it could be from either in theory, which has me uncertain exactly where it's from. And I hope I'm putting these incorrectly. I'm not confident at all that these are going in correctly because... Fortunately, I have it on camera if I really forget, but it is what it is. Let's leave that out for now. Let's put these in. This is going to be a problem. We're going to leave the rest of the stuff out because I don't want to mess with the box. We'll put the rules back in. We'll put the catalog of Pandasaurus's other games back in, and the rest can sit nicely on top in the corner while I figure out how to actually punch everything and put that away, and of course validate that that's an extra board 
and I don't have to worry about it. This can go off to the side over there. Box number two. We have the water pack. The water pack. These are a bunch of expansions to Dinosaur World. I'm always going to want to pause so I can figure out whether I'm saying island or world. But these are expansion packs to Dinosaur World. Don't know what they do. Don't know how they impact, modify, change the game. Again, I vaguely remember from the Kickstarter when I backed it, when I followed it, but didn't lock any of that into my muscle memory. I do know that we have additional dinosaurs for these various factions or packs, whatever it is. The water dinosaurs are going to be particularly cool, or hopefully particularly cool. And we have these over here. Ooh, they are nice and shiny. So we have these over here. Let's show you the general overhead. You can see they have that acrylic look going on. Let's show you some of these. They do look, they look, they look solid. I like the look of them. So we have these over here. Look at that. Look at the way it like little shimmery and shine. Shimmer and shine. Whoa. You see, I have kids in the house, so I, I get these little uh, songs from various kid shows that get stuck in my head and never, ever leave me alone. The good news is I'm never lonely because I always have some little demon of a song stuck in my head from whatever it is. Backyardigans, Paw Patrol, Shimmer and Shine, Doc McStuffins, Doc McStuffins. You're going to make me feel better. Whoa, 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 what's the place to go? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't, this is not my fault. This is my kid's fault. It's the price you pay. My favorite. My favorite story ever. That's not true. One of my favorite stories along these lines was one time where my kids were watching Backyardigans, which is one of these kid shows, downstairs behind me. And I hit pause, like, time for bed, kids. We went upstairs, went to bed. I came back downstairs. I hit space bar. And about half an hour later, I realized that I had hit Spacebar on their show and had had their show on in the background for half an hour without them there, just on instinct. I just hit Spacebar and continued. And I was watching Backyardigans in the background while they were all asleep. Not a proud moment for me. Not a proud moment. Let's take out this hybrid pack. Looks like flying dinosaurs. Maybe. Nope, not flying dinosaurs. Never mind. I got thrown off. We have the Galaraptor and the Comporguandidon. Comp Are you making this up? Patinosaurus, are you just making up dinosaurs at this point? We have the Brontolosaurus, we have the Tyrannosaurus, we have the Velocidon and the Dilopidus Dinosaurus. See, here's the thing. I trust fully that they know dinosaurs better than I do. I trust that with 100% certainty. I also trust that there are plenty of dinosaurs I've never heard of. But I don't trust that they wouldn't necessarily just not make up dinosaurs. Maybe they would make up dinosaurs. These are very amberific. Amberific dinosaurs. My kids are going to have a blast playing with these. They enjoyed the dinosaurs from Dinosaur, Dinosaur Island back in the day when I had those. They like playing with them, setting them up. See, I'm more of a mini junkie, but my kids like standees and miniatures and everything. The amount of fun they can have with a good standee. My kid will set up, um, what's the game? There's a game, a dungeon game, a dungeon crawling game for kids, specifically kid focused that I don't remember the name of it, but they'll set it up. They'll play with the miniatures, just have a blast. And for me, miniatures just don't really, not miniatures, standees. For me, standees don't really cut it. I don't love standees. There are exceptions, but I don't love standees. They use something I'm reluctantly okay with. Beast is actually a, an exception. Beast is a game currently on Kickstarter, I want to say, although, like I said, I don't know when this video goes up, so maybe not currently on Kickstarter. But Beast is a game where I don't think miniatures would fit quite as well with the rest of the aesthetic of the game. I think that the standees, and if you get the extra acrylic standees, then they have acrylic standees for the game as well. So I think those fit much better than miniatures, but that's one of those rarer cases. I'm sure there are other examples I can think of, but the times when I prefer, you know, either meeples or standees to miniatures, it's rare. This might be one of those games. I feel like miniatures in this game could be overwhelming and unnecessary. Well, it definitely would be overwhelming and, un and unnecessary, but they'd also be fun. So the question is, which one is it more? We have the Arctic Squirrel. We have the Giant Sloth, the Sabertooth Tiger, the Cave Bear, the Mammoth, and the Megalosaurus. Those all seem real, so maybe everything else is real. That's how they get you, by the way. In general, the way you get people in life is you mix in facts together with fiction. If you just do fiction, no one will believe you. If you just do facts, well, then they're just facts. When you mix in facts together with fiction, that's where it's intriguing. So... These, I like how the colors and all these are different, how they all have different colors. No! One went on the floor. One went on the floor. Now I have to remember to get it before the video is over. We have this Elkin, this Elkin thing with the, the horns. Elkin, look at that. These are really, really nice. We have the woolly mammoth. My kid's going to like, my, my youngest is going to look at this and just be like, elephant, elephant, elephant. Do we have a sloth? Do we have like a little, um, what's his name? We do have a sloth. We have sloths. I think these are sloths. This is just straight up Ice Age, isn't it? 
What's that the sloth's name from that from that Ice Age movie? I can't remember his name. Not the sloth. There's the sloth who's like the whatever character. But then there's Scrat. Scrat. We should have a Scrat promo somewhere in this box. I don't know why we don't. Or maybe we do and I just haven't seen it. But that's that's all the expansions for Dinosaur World, which I'll have to dive into. There are so many games that I need to dive into. It is it is getting problematic. But I would like to play this one. I like the look of it. I never so Dinosaur Island, one thing I didn't really talk about when I was talking about Dinosaur Island is I played the game. But one of the reasons I was so eager to get rid of it and happy to back Dinosaur World right away is because I hated, like, I'm, hate's a strong word, but I really, really genuinely disliked the coloring, the look of Dinosaur Island. I didn't like that 90s, 80s day glow vibe thing going on. Did not like it. Still to this day, do not like it. This is going to be Dinosaur Island Roar and Write, which is a roll and write game with the name Roar and Write, which another game tried to do at the same time, but they had to change the name because they're like, oh, that's two of us at the same time. That's a bad idea. So let's pivot and change that. This rule book is going to, this rule book is, this rule book is three pages. Nope, set up. We ignore key concepts. Pages four all the way. This, if this is longer than the other one, granted the pages are smaller. Four through, through. Where are we? Where are we? Disasters. Run park cleanup, building cards. Oh my gosh, this is longer. <laughs> this is a longer rule book and then 22 to game variants. So like 20 ish, four to 20, that's like 17 pages. This is longer than the rule book for Dinosaur World. That's impressive. But roll and write, honestly, I'm, I'm excited about that because a good roll and write, a good roll and write does have complexity, in my opinion. Uh, there's different kinds of roll and writes, but like actually Panasaurus makes a bunch of roll and writes themselves. They make Quinto, they used to make Silver and Gold. I think that left their catalog. I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but I saw a post online of someone saying, oh, these are the last Silver and Gold you can get. You know, go to, go to Target now and pick them up because they're not being reprinted. So we have our first player marker, which we have the cooler one in the other box. We have various erasers that are dinosaurs. These are dinosaur erasers over here. Look at that. It's an eraser. It's rubbery. See, look how it bends. It bends because it's an eraser, not bending like the player board earlier. We have the various objective cards, various cards for the polyomino shapes, the various dice you'll be utilizing, which are different dice, but I'm sure people will confuse them. I think the different dice. I'm not even sure of the different dice. Then we have these boards over here. And then we have your two boards. You're going to grab a sheet from each of these. If this looks complicated, then good, because that's what makes an interesting roll and write. I think there's a place, a large place in the board game space for many roll and writes that are not overly complicated, and I have a bunch of them. I love them. But the problem is, too many roll and writes doesn't leave you a lot of options as far as how to develop or stand out. If they're always simple, then they're also going to have degrees of similarity that take away from what can make a game, well, interesting or great. I appreciate some of my favorite roll and writes are games like Fleet the Dice Game, are games like Ganshan Clever, not uh, Ganshan Clever, or Ganshan Clever 2, whatever it is, Doppel So Clever. I like those games because they give you more nuance, more more things to think about as you go through the game, and I, well, like that. But that's going to be, that is my unboxing. That is the end. Bear with me. It's going to be a difficult few weeks as I get this out of my vocabulary. That is the end of my unboxing for Dinosaur World and all the stuff. I hope to table this one as soon as possible. Then again, I think that about, like, 50 other games in this basement, so... Some of them will get played, others will sit on the shelf for way too long before I eventually look at it and realize I never got to the table, and it's time to move on, and it's sad, and I'm looking at you, Alter Quest. I, I'm still keeping Alter Quest. I just, I haven't played that one. Most of the Kickstarter games get played at a fairly decent rate. They get played, they get pulled out. I actually play a lot of games, but some of them sit there and languish, sadly, forever alone. Unlike me, because I always have kids' songs in my head. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, have a good one.